Well, I can't imagine a more perfect morning here with this mist around us to bring to start our morning song. So I'm going to um, get, kind of set the mood for you this morning, okay?
started that with a little Native American uh, flute. Here we are in, in the country of Native Americans, and I'm sure before all these buildings were here, we, you could have heard that flute out here in the mountains. And then the first song that I played was a song written by a harp player that lived in the 1600s, Thomas Canellan, and he wrote that tune called Dawning of the Day. And since most of these tunes were passed along orally, I find it just such an amazing thing that we have those tunes after 400 years, we still have them. And then the second one was an Irish jig called Lark in the Morning. So I was hoping, that as I called the larks in, I was hoping we'd have a few in, but may, maybe we will when the, when the fog lifts a bit. So we'll, I'm going to continue the birds a theme. And, so I'm, and I, I have had the pleasure of getting to work with and know uh, Charmaine this week. It's been such a pleasure. And she's, I asked her to join me. Let me turn the chair. Look at you. And so I told her I had learned this song about a bird. One of my first visits here to John Campbell, Jan Davidson sang this in the morning song. So I'm going to carry on that tradition. My version's probably a little different from his, but um, so it's, I'm as free a little bird as I can be, and I hope you will join me each time on the chorus. I'm a free a little bird as I can be. I'm going to build my nest in the big oak tree so no one will ever bother me. <laughs> this just watch our name <laughs>
to that particular <laughs> Irish reel. So it's always inspiring for a musician to get to play with a dancer. Thank you. So I bet that's highly recommended to warm, as a way to warm up out here. Definitely, if you're cold, <laughs> stand on up. So I will go, I'll, um, let's see. Uh, Another, one more bird song. <laughs> uh, so this is, I play the Irish harp and also the Irish penny whistle. And I um, recently have been uh, get, getting a few tunes from a, a really great Irish uh, player in, that lives in Minneapolis. His name is Sean Gavin. And he taught me this tune recently. It's called, let's see if I can say it in Gaelic. I've been practicing. Tan clogat an fogat an lay. You don't know whether that's right or not, does it? <laughs> it was perfect. Oh, oh thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so it's that, uh, in, yes, in English roughly says, um, when the cock gr crows, it is day. So listen and maybe you'll hear a little of the cock crowing in this. This week we've had several cold, frosty mornings, haven't we? <laughs> so uh, that reminds me of a tune. There is an, uh, well, I started to say an Irish reel called Cold Frosty Morning, but like so many of the tunes that um, have settled into our even American fiddling collection, many of those came from or um, uh, Scotland and Ireland, and we're not really sure, you know, the, the folks were traveling about and sharing the tunes, so um, I don't want to say it's, it, for sure it's an Irish reel, it could have been a, a Scottish hornpipe, and, uh, but some of the Irish fiddle players took it and, and kind of made it their own, and then the Americans took it and made it their own, and that's how, that's the beauty of this folk music, is that it's been passed along and shared, and everyone kind of does what they want to with the music. So um, before I get into the cold frosty morning, there's another tune that I think goes with it very nicely, and it's a, an English country dance tune called None Such. So I'll use that to kind of set the mood um, for the cold frosty morning. <laughs>
Gardens. I love the new the wooden fence that they're building around the garden. That's beautiful out there. So I always love to wander in the gardens when I'm here. So I think we'll go in the garden with the song this morning as well. going to string break and it's like because <laughs> yeah. yeah. it sounds about like that that's your, that's your five minute knitting needle oh, oh that, was my, that was it okay yeah that got my attention Settle. all right yeah. <laughs> well uh yeah um thanks so much Graham. yeah i'll do a couple more just um to finish up with and again just to share a little bit about the the this beautiful instrument that i've been teaching this week and it's been great. Had wonderful students. Um, it, they've I've filled their brain with so much this week. They're uh, they're threatening me today not to give them anything else new. That uh, the harp is a beautiful instrument, and it um, was an instrument that started uh, this framed harp, this triangular frame, all the way back in 1200, in um, 1100, 1200 in Ireland. And we have a, some, a couple of remaining of the harps, the Brian Baru harp and the Queen Lamont uh, harp in um, the Trinity College of Ireland in the museum. So we have seen what the smaller harps look like. Um, they were about, they were lap size, the earlier harps, but still had the same framework to them. And, um, and one of them, of the most, probably the most famous of those uh, harpers, the legend, legendary harpers in Ireland, was named Turlock O'Carolan. And he, like many of the harpers, was blind. He was a blind harper. Um, many of the, um, at the time, of course, there was no vaccination for smallpox. And so oftentimes, um, someone that was blinded by smallpox were, uh, if they were fortunate enough to get a tutor for them, they would go into the music uh, the line of work. And so many of them became harpers. And one of, um, he, he traveled all over Ireland 
and left us with, again, it's, an, it's amazing that we have about 200 of his compositions still today. Again, those were passed along orally. Many of them were collected in 1792. There was a harp festival, the Belfast Harp Festival, because they knew that this tradition was dying out, and so they hired Edward Bunting to um, record the old harpers playing all the tunes that they could remember. And he was, um, he was an organist for a church. He scribed the music as they were being played, and he also followed up with them afterwards. And so much of this music was preserved at that festival. So I'm gonna, I, would, uh, I will end my uh, concert, and thanks again for coming out with um, one of my favorite of the Turlock of Carolyn uh, songs, Blind Mary. No, no, that's not the one I was going to do. Well, I could do it, but actually, that's the one I did yesterday. <laughs> um, I'm going, I plan to end with She Begs You More. It was one of the first compositions that he wrote, and it's perfect for here because he, wrote, he was inspired to write this based on the, um, the fa two fairy hills called She Beg and She More, which were two mountains or hills in Ireland. And, um, and so this is what supposedly one of his first compositions, She Begs You More. never too late to start playing the ancient harp of Ireland. My, my eldest student at John C. Campbell was 87 years old when she took it up <laughs> and was able to play for her assisted living folks um, where she was living when she went back. So it's never too late to take up the harp. So, okay, all right. Thanks. If you want to come up and check out the CDs from my Irish band, I've got those up here. So. Enjoy your day.